Hello, Dave here. I'm just in the studio putting together the video edits for the Harley Davidson Road King test that appears in issue 171 of Heavy Duty magazine. Check it out. We were making our way up the Springbrook Road on the Gold Coast hinterland and my pal Spook was repeatedly jumping off his breakout and onto the Road King for the ride by shots. He said, yeah, it does handle surprisingly well after he'd done one of the many U-turns during the photo shoot. And he was absolutely correct. For a machine that tips the scales at 360 kilograms dry, the Road King handles like a much smaller and lighter bike. The latest in the line of storied FLHR motorcycles has evolved to a point where it has become a very accomplished all-round machine. This is no longer just a large capacity touring bike. If you go back to issue number 149 of Heavy Duty and our first test of the current configuration featuring the 107 cube Milwaukee 8 engine and all the ensuing Milwaukee 8s we've ridden since, we've all noted that the new motor has become better, tighter and a little more pleasant with every model year. As far as stock engines are concerned, this is easily the sweetest and the smoothest of the several dozen I've tested so far. And yes, I have written and said that several times, but that's because every example since that 17 has raised the bar and shield slightly. For 2020, it has the same 100 by 111 millimeter bore and stroke, it still displaces 1,746 cc's with a 10 to 1 compression ratio and it still produces 150 newton meters at 3,250 rpm. But somehow, it's just a little bit nicer and the boss reckons that's all down to the fuel mapping. I don't know if we've reached peak 107 yet, but this motor must be getting pretty close. I found myself constantly having to check the speedo because it's so easy to exceed the limit on this bike. So effortless and refined has it become. Seriously, a number of times I was just cruising along during the two week test, looked down at the tank mounted instrument cluster and went, oops, you gotta slow down there, Davy boy. All right, well, we'll pull onto the freeway here. Give it a handful going on the up ramp. That gets along beautifully. Really does. And out here, this is where the bike really excels. It's just so smooth. There's just the slightest of pulse coming through the handlebars, a little bit through the footboards, but the Milwaukee 8 engine has become very, very smooth. There are a few things that have remained constant throughout. The linked Brembo brakes with 320mm four piston fixed front and rear disc are still excellent stoppers with a really nice feel to them. Oh, those brakes are lovely. They're just lovely. But the ABS has become quieter and smoother than in earlier incarnations. It's got this really nice ABS system that you can brake hard and late and throw it into the corners with great confidence because you know the front wheel isn't going to lock up. The 49mm dual bending valve front forks and what HD calls premium standard preload adjustable rear shocks combined with the 1625mm wheelbase, 26 degree rake and 170mm trail to give a planted, solid and very confidence inspiring feel on the road. 
it does chuck around remarkably well and is very manoeuvrable for a bike that weighs as much as it does. I've just been out doing a photo shoot and I've chucked a dozen U-turns, tight U-turns on the bike and it really is remarkable how balanced and steady on its feet it is. You can throw it into a corner, it's just wonderfully balanced. Very manoeuvrable, just picking your way around those manhole covers is effortless. It goes exactly where you want it to go. Yet when you're here just cruising along, it's rock solid. It really is. All that has been enhanced by new wheels, both front and rear, and they have changed significantly from the 2017 unit. The older model had impeller cast rims, and the front was a 17 inch by 130, and the rear was a 16 inch by 180. Now, it has been fitted with great looking 18 inch slicer wheels, both front and rear. The front is still a 130 section, and it has the same 180 rear, but Harley claims they have lighter unsprung weight and what they have done for sure is taking the overall handling up a notch. The larger diameter hoops feel like they have helped with the ground clearance for the big footboards and they have enhanced the manoeuvrability, flickability and all round nimbleness of the machine. But they haven't compromised its ability over rough or uneven surfaces. The lean angles remain the same as the previously claimed 32 degrees but the new model definitely feels like it tips in further and harder and it absolutely feels more agile. So the cornering clearance is good. We scraped then but I was going hard into a really tight corner and just touched the footboards down gently. And the handling of the bike is really good. The way it sides to sides is very good. That's one of my standard tests there. That little side to side going up the, through that intersection has got a big bump right in the middle of it that used to throw older touring model Harleys a little bit sideways as it lurched on the rear suspension. But all that's ancient history now. Flicking the Road King around into city manhole covers or changing lines to miss the potholes on the Springbrook Road proved quite delightful and consigned the heavy machinery feel of much older Road Kings to history. The new wheels have also given the bike a much leaner look and style without compromising its heritage appearance. It's a style that is unmistakably FLHR. I showed my 90 year old father the bike and he said, well, it's just like my 1942, except for the saddle. It still has the beautifully chromed Hiawatha headlamp to sell and running lights that light the way brilliantly, and it still has Harley's beautiful paint fit and finish. The silver pine and spruce colours on the test bike had a deep pearl that changed hue slightly depending on the ambient light. Nearly everyone commented on how classy the bike looked. It has a beautiful line. But it's not just about how this bike looks and the emotion it stirs. And sure, it does make me feel like the king of the road when I'm aboard. And I did mutter to myself, look at that, several times when I stepped back to photograph it. But over the course of the two weeks, I did a ton of different riding in a variety of conditions and it really nailed it. Around town, from peak hour snarls to leisurely boulevard cruiser to running errands, it was a delight. The EFI didn't stumble once, even in the daily gridlock. The clutch didn't get heavy, the gearbox was crisp and precise, and the motor purred with minimal vibration throughout. On the days where I did get amongst it on both the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast hinterlands, where the environments ranged from tight and twisty mountain roads to fast open countryside with long open sweepers, and with the more than an hour of freeway to get to the best riding spots, the bike was almost flawless. I even did a section of nicely graded smooth dirt and it was sure footed throughout. In the loose stuff, those excellent link Brembos and confidence inspiring ABS made for a relaxed run, even over the really loose stuff. 
Same for hooking in on the twisty sections. The balance of the bike is outstanding. It could do with a little more suspension travel on the really rough going if you get too far off the beaten track, but the 18 inch wheel combo makes for a big touring bike that is still very rewarding on a mountain pass. It has much Grinworthy versatility. Then when you get back on the freeway, it's as easy as dialing in the excellent cruise control. To adjust the speed on the cruise control, it's just a matter of bumping the switch up, it takes the speed up. Of course, if you want to drop it down, just toggle it down. Really nice. Hunkering down behind that big, easily removable windscreen, sinking back into the wonderfully comfortable and plush all-day saddle, stretching out on the big footboards and watching it all roll by in supreme style and comfort. It's solid, it's planted and it's plush. This is a wonderfully comfortable motorcycle. There's a bit of buffeting coming off the top of the screen for a tall guy like me. That would easily be fixed by putting a slightly taller screen on it. And I'd probably fit Harley's extended reach saddle. That said, it is very comfortable right out of the box. It's got these lovely big footboards, these nice sort of mini apes, I guess, handlebars. They've certainly got quite a rise to them. And the riding position is just sit at the dinner table. It really is. Of course, the big windscreen's removable. It's just a matter of give it a pull towards the front and it lifts off its brackets easily, comes off in a matter of seconds or goes back on equally in a matter of seconds. There's just the nice touches about this bike that are really good too. The mirrors, for example, are fabulous. They're some of the best mirrors on any motorcycle. Clear vision, both sides, really good. Of course, it's got Harley's unique one switch on each handlebar self-cancelling indicators, which are also a really great system. Then down here on the tank-mounted instrument panel, you've got all the high-tech trick computers, rep, range countdown computer. All the trick computer functions are there, nestled inside this old-school looking dial. The range on the bike from the tank is also very good. When I filled it up yesterday, it was showing 414 kilometers as the range. As I told anyone who would listen over the course of the test, I've ridden pretty much every model of new Harley Davidson over the last 20 years, and this is the one I would buy. This is me. I like nearly everything about this motorcycle right off the showroom floor. This, uh, this is just one of those bikes that makes me feel good just for being aboard. It really is a great all-round motorcycle that cruises and tours. That it's not too bad on a twisty road. It really does handle better than a lot of people think a Harley Davidson does. I love me some Road King, I really do. This is one of my favourite ever motorcycles. It's the Harley I would buy if I was in the market to buy a Harley. This would be the one. I think it's just got the right level of tech. It's got the right everything for my tastes. Anyway, you could read about this motorcycle and get the full test and report in issue 171 of Heavy Duty Magazine.